Hello, hello. This is Pigsy doing a video. So there is some interesting stuff. Now I think people know sort of some esoteric stuff like um, PayPal and PayPal and Babel, and there's always kind of like rhyming to do with like uh, and what is the Tower of Babel? It's kind of like we had the division when um, languages all got messed up different areas all had different languages that humans learn because they could be a revolt if they all sort of knew the same language and it's kind of like um, the this, this story because they could then challenge the gods at some point so there's a certain level of an infallibility really So yeah, there's a there's, uh, there's kind of an esoteric level there. I mean, whether it's true or not, you know, it's just. Uh, and the other thing you hear is bull markets of bear, bear bull, babel again. So I don't know what it serves. Something to look into. I mean, it's referred to it's like the mixing of languages, but there's also a common thread like this: the uh, Latin, um, you know, and then, and then English is sort of construction of um, of loads of unification. That also represents a kind of an attunement of power, so base bases of power aligning. And uh, you know, who knows what it'd be like in the future? But yeah, English is quite strong in its position, but it can borrow words from its other other Latin languages and Indian and a lot of other things it's got in there as well. And the reverse happens as well. So we've got things like Hinglish and uh, like Hindi and English combined. I'd have to do a bit more language study myself. I mean, I don't know loads of stuff. Uh, like, and I tour of it. So you got like in the kitchen, uh, kit. but there's um, Anna tour of it, and there's Anna. Anna, Anna is the slight things, or Shenshina, Shenshini. Shenshini is more than one, and Shenshina is just one, one female. Um, Morshina. Uh, so there's lots of, yeah, I mean, there's things I've been looking at. Uh, Jivaka, yeah, female, little girl. Uh, Nan Heisen, I think. No, that's, that's a big girl together. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's fun playing with languages, so I've got some language stuff to look at. And, uh, to practice more um, umbaji and um, umgot and all this <laughs> but it, it, you know it's, it's okay but it's just like uh, it, it's good for your brain it, I noticed after I've done some languages I was thinking a bit quicker because I've had um, a challenge I've exercised a muscle in the brain of learning so because my brain's had to look for this whole memory bank and said well this word doesn't exist in your mind so now you've got a Recreate and also you're not saying it properly, so you have to keep recorrecting your um, speech patterns until you get it correct. And so it's creating an algorithm. So the algorithm now it knows what it doesn't sound like, or what it can get away with as well. So yeah, lots of interesting stuff goes on in the back of your brain. So that's one thing. Um, other things to do, kind of the whole uh, spirituality, the whole internet, and maybe cyberspace and anything else is going on is um, 
I mean, a lot of things have been planned out in advance, and I've talked about crypto stuff, but it, it's a, it's basically something else. Um, like we've become uh, decentralised through technology, so I don't have to go to um, sit in front of a desktop computer. I can pretty much do most stuff through my um, phone. I can run a whole business through my smartphone. I could say send me the invoice, read it, respond to it, or everything. As long as your phone's decent enough. In the past I had a rubbish phone actually. I was running a whole garage department on mobile and cycling around uh, Reading. And I was doing another part-time job on that and I wonder why it didn't work out for me. Well it's probably because a job and a half and uh, blooming um, around the clock I, I just lost the, the autonomy to function so well in the job that was the problem I can't really moan about that however you gain management experience which was good and that was good for me and so so the main thing I'm trying to come across is that basically the world has become decentralized and that is kind of the aim really I mean the, the idea of global government is that there's a, a functional model within that society and I think basically smartphones might be that and the smartphones are also I mean like I'm recording a, a thing for YouTube on it as I'm driving down the road I wouldn't be able to do that uh, 20 years ago that I'm aware of um, so it also does the police inside creates algorithms marketing um, manipulation as well it could be sort of um, you know, directing you towards websites and certain sources of information. Uh, the police might be the censorship. Maybe they don't want you to know the alternative um, opinions of a riot or an organisation involved in it. Maybe the media just wants to be the, 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 the mouthpiece for them and say, yeah, this is alright, this group here, whatever they might be called, um, you know, kicking off, this is why they've done it, because we need environmental change racial equality or whatever's going on so yeah it all gets a bit blown out of proportion but it feeds into um, political narratives and that's the issue and there's also the data that's fake you know like a uh, lot of statistics no way to prove a statistics correct somebody could actually round it up I mean I think I said before I was had to do a little survey of a block I couldn't get hold of these, some of the people and it was a 50-50 sort of um, on the block. And there was, a, there was some person I could get hold of. And I did knock loads of times. I thought, well, what would be the best? Basically, I, took, I made the, um, the management decision on it. Because I decided to stop people graffitiing this block. These lads are less likely to hang, hang out in a block that's bright pink. So we had a, a baby pink. And then people they said, well, somebody at the block, whose kids were doing the, 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 the graffiti, said, why is it pink? I said, oh, it's just a survey. People chose it. Um, it's either between yellow, blue or pink, really. So there was another colour there. But, you know, it's just basically um, they wanted to stock up on a certain paint so they can cover the graffiti. But the graffiti dropped massively because it was a, a less attractive. No one's going to want to tag a pink wall if they're a bloke. You know, it's kind of a, I'm a macho type person. Um, so yeah, well, the other thing about this, so we're getting more into this decentralisation stuff. And so with the pandemic, education got a bit more decentralised as well, and it has done because a lot of people probably doing their homework through Google and you know looking up things. It's a lot different than when I was younger because I, I always be basically expected to read a book, and, and I wasn't really, I'm not really a bookworm. I like books, but I, I'm not really able to sit down and concentrate long enough. I've got some short attention span. Um, but I have a very abstract thinking mind, so I'm able to lock in on other things, like visually um, sort of um, conform things in my mind quite a bit and, and process things. So it's a case of once it's in there, it's great, but it's, it's getting that information in. Sometimes I really take lots of stuff in, and then there's other times where I just don't have the interest and it's really quite difficult. And it's a shame because I can't fully control it. You know, it's like um, holding your eyes open and you have to re go over it again. But I'm able to watch things over and over and over again, which some people can't do. The same with like songs, if I like musical songs, I might listen to them not over and over again. So it could be an Asperger trait in it, I don't know. Um, and then also, you, sometimes it's difficult to know what you're, what you're actually taking in, like if you speed read, you can have actually read that book and you've stored it in your memory, but you're not fully aware of all the contents of what you learn. 
because you've extrapolated data based on the pattern. It's a bit like you've skimmed through a newspaper. You, can, you read the articles and then you might know somebody's died or something, you know, that sort of thing. So information's decentralized. Uh, the internet acts as a kind of nervous system for um, the globe, basically. That's what it's working towards. Um, liquidity is going to come through the cryptocurrency between different countries so that wealth is a bit more equalized between them and also they can feed them to projects in other countries where it's not going to be gate kept the money so much hopefully not there's too many like charities and stuff and I don't think they're doing anything I don't have any proof they just keep showing me pictures of people badly injured and things on TV it looks like a horror show you think so what did what did Africa do for the last thousand years? So everyone's walking around cliff lips and drinking um, stale water and it was a war zone and everything else. It's not quite like that. And I personally, if I lived in a really bad war zone, I think it may be a good time to move away. Or either that I'm going to just change the complete environment I live in. I live in a bunker or something and be armed to the teeth. But if I couldn't do that, then the only option is to move to a more safer location. And uh, so there might be some projects that will evolve and they talk about corporate entities and you've got digital entities I guess so with the liquidity it's going to feed into that and so the um, the nervous system and um, the finance is kind of the vascular system to um, these organizations so it's going to feed them to allow them to grow and you know some of them could be not so great potentially but I don't think that's just going to be true, I think that money's booming behind something, there's um, nonsense talk on the internet, like there's things with currency stuff, they go a moonshot, 100 times X and stuff, yes things will go up, but pushing people into hyper responses, they're trying to make people emotionally stirred by stuff, that's what they do. it's just a shock, shock tactic, my advice is read what the company does and if you believe in the product, support it. It's like if I make good money, I've got to still A, keep a job because society needs, a, needs people to work to function and but I will sort of modify the workload based on my physical health and well-being. That's, that's one of the key things. Better life. I just better life, better living. That's the, the focus point. Um, yeah, there's stuff to do with hyper response stuff and it's no different than what you know, like I mentioned, the charities talking about sort of like doom and gloom. Or if you don't get into it, it's going to be the end. All this, you know, put your, all your money into it. So it's not the right way of, of doing things. So these people say, Well, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm going to frighten the hell out of you. Um, maybe they should probably put a disclaimer there is that you know, this is purely entertainment. Don't believe a word I'm saying. It'd be better than moonshots, nonsense, and stuff. I mean, some, some things are set to go grow massively. But you can't say it's going to make you a millionaire and stuff. And if it does, so what? I mean, you've still got to live your life. I mean, I, it won't affect how I live my life at all. It just means I've got, um, well, if I have a rainy day, I've got a backup plan then. Or I can focus on the other f projects. I mean, with money, a certain power. I mean, men are drawn to power. And so the, the use of it, is I can have a better life with it. That's that's really what it is. I mean, if I want to retire and live in a different country, I can do that, or, or whatever. You know, it's just options. But then again, it's a global transition, growth, the race. You know, everything's going to be different in 50 years. I mean, already in 20 years, it looks like I live in a different a different universe because of all the different things that go on nowadays uh, with the internet and so on. Um, computers. You know, walking around smartphones. Like I said, they're going to get more and more advanced. And um, you know it's pretty, pretty quite incredible what, what we're going to be able to do, what we what we can actually achieve in the future. And then we've got possibility of interstellar stuff, which will be brilliant. I mean, I really don't understand why they haven't got housing on the moon yet. Well, maybe they have. They're just not. They just this this is like V V I P. It's like a retirement place for presidents and and celebrities that that, that die off. They end up uh, living out their days. Uh, in some lunar retreat or something, who knows? But anyway, yeah, I mean, there's basically there's lots of opportunities there, and they should start to milk them. I mean, when we look at markets and stuff, when it drops down, 
and it has the potential to go up, you just look at the algorithm for the last whatever years, and then look at reasons why it potentially might have gone down. So if it's had a major hack and it's only gone down, well then, unless they fix that, it's going to keep on going down. Um, or some other news, something else happens, some scandal or something. So I mean, once that's resolved, fine. Uh, then it's going, to, it's going to boom back up. But the other thing, if Bitcoin and Ethereum go down, then that's just a natural order of things. And, and it's, if they're in the red, if they've gone bare, then it might be a good time to invest in them, if, depending on how far they've gone down by. Or you might wait until they just just start to bounce back up. And then you put some some money in this way, because you're going to be guaranteed a little increase, because they're below their normal average. It's quite an important uh, thing to observe, really. And then just sit sweet, sit sweet, make profit. I mean, the main thing now, you know, if you if you are interested in crypto, I would say staking and stuff. Um, I've started to look at some other options, and I can't really brag about anything yet because I need to see what happens. But you know, from anyone on my channel personally, bet I'd, I'd say look from my experience, this is what I've achieved. So look into it if you're interested. If not, don't. And it's no big, it's no biggie. Um, so yeah, so, so we're kind of creating this uh, global entity that's going to be integrated. And you know, when, when you get a phone, it's a universal translate. Can you imagine that? You can go to any country, you don't need to know any language, um, and then you, they can speak, and it will change the language in front of you there and then. And then you can speak, and it would just say it back to them, and it could be any language. Now there probably is stuff to do that, but it might be a hell of a lot more easier. And also currency, you won't need to convert. That's not that too bad. Shut my door. <laughs> that was a, a scary man. I got my daughter driving. Do, 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 do. would be scary right so yeah basically it's all going to be decentralized everything's been wonderful um, don't give up on your fear because if you just give up on your bank and go went completely crypto you're going to trigger stresses in the government what you do is you have kind of like an alter financial an alternative basically just more than one bank account that's what you need otherwise if you if something happens with your crypto and you've got no bank what the hell are you going to do oh, peace out, have a great one. Bye.